What's going on friends? I'm actually editing another video right this second, but suddenly there was a knock at the door and this arrived. It's a 3D printer from Creality. Yep, yeah, can't believe it myself. Creality have sent me out a Creality printer, which is kind of strange, right? It's probably not that strange at all, but let's get to installing it and chucking on the Sonic pad. Here we go. You are watching a master at work. Just quickly, thank you to PCBWay.com for sponsoring this video, PCB prototyping the easy way. But that's not all. And as this is a 3D printing video, PCBWay do also offer various services in the 3D printing industry, including SLA printing, DLP, FDM, SLM, and SLS. So if you have a specific requirement for manufacturing or prototyping, PCBWay could be the solution for your design needs. Check them out at PCBWay.com. So it's been quite some time since I've unboxed a Creality printer. And if you sense a slight undertone to this video, it's because the last machine that I received from Creality, the CR30, well, we ended up falling out over it. Since then, of course, I have reviewed their CR Laser and Sonic Pad. The pad, in fact, cemented our working relationship, which led on to this very review. So, in this video, I aim to show you a couple of things. Number one, the setup of the Creality flagship printer, the Ender 3 S1 Pro. Number two, my thoughts on it. Number three, how to set up the Creality Sonic Pad with the Ender 3 S1 Pro. And again, my thoughts on that. Number four, and at the time of recording this, which is actually the last day of October the 31st, the main issues that we still have around the Sonic Pad and perhaps the reasons that maybe you should still buy one. So let's get straight on with this unboxing then. The printer was actually shipped to me directly from China, which is sort of ironic being that Creality have just opened their UK warehouse. It took about a week to arrive and the box, although it's been stained from a spillage, was actually in pretty good order and the printer has been very well packed. I opened the box and was greeted by a number of packaged items, including a card suggesting printed filaments, temperatures and a number of useful tips on how to use the printer. Inside the box and in addition to the printer, we have a selection of tools, a PEI sheet, in my case a UK power lead, support documentations and manuals. The printer does come with all the usual tools to install all the parts. Now I hadn't actually seen the S1 Pro in person before but when talking to Creality they seemed to think that I would be very impressed with what they had to offer and in all fairness they were very very proud of this product. Um, so I don't normally I don't normally come back to um, myself when, uh, when I'm doing an unboxing. Um, no real reason why but I've got to say Creality have really stepped up their game here. This is, um, damn, this is, this looks kind of exciting. Um, huh. Tiny bit speechless, but never that speechless. Um, we've got a light at the top. We've got a PEI sheet here. We've got a lot of kind of plug-in elements to this. Um, the printer does look really nice. Um, not that I'm surprised at that because, you know, We'd hope they'd make quality items and stuff, but uh, yeah, this is um, this is looking pretty good. Well done. Let's move on. All that, of course, said and done, it does very much come down to two things to be required for this to be a good value item, and that, of course, is price and quality. And on that price, the S1 comes in at $399. This one, the Pro, comes in at $479. But what do you get for your money? See our touch on the auto bed leveling a 32-bit silent motherboard, a PEI spring steel build plate, the Sprite dual gear extruder, which by the way, heats up to a fabulous 300 degrees. It has a touch screen, which by the way, if you are upgrading to the Sonic pad will become totally redundant and useless. And that by the way, is pretty standard for Clipper if you're installing it onto a machine like this. I really do however, like the LED strip. The print speeds here are suggested up to and up towards 150 millimeters per second. And depending on what you are printing, and which filament you're using again and if you're using the sonic pad or clipper and it's dialed in then you might be able to achieve a lot more than that so on the s1 and the s1 plus the differences are mainly on the touch screens and the heat from the nozzle hence being a pro the plus of course has a 300 by 300 build size whereas we find the usual end of three of 220 by 220 by 270 on the pro and of course the s1 $479. With the CR6 SE currently on the Creality official site is $279. So yeah. I'm just wondering really though, would you buy this printer at $479 and then buy a Sonic Pad just because it's Creality? 
Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And by the way, currently I'm printing parts for a Voron. In fact, I've got two Voron builds on the go at the moment, mainly printing in PETG and ABS. I'm printing it on the S1 Pro at the moment. So I've been very busy with the printer over the past few days. I've also printed the V3 hot end part for the Losbot 747, which is also done in ABS on this printer. And I have to say that I'm very impressed with the standard of printing here right now. So if you have made it this far, please hit that subscribe button and chuck a little like if you've enjoyed the video so far. From the unboxing to print is roughly around about 20 minutes. As with most of these style printers, there are the usual four screws at the bottom and three screws in the side for the screen. The filament spool holder, which is also the bearing version, clips onto the top. I also took a moment to find the files online to add the sonic pad to the top of the printer using special brackets. The only real issue that I've had here is with cable management, but if you're clever with it, the cables can sit inside a cable tidy and it still would look quite elegant. The cables on the printer all plug into either motors, limit switches or the daughter boards. The main hot end ribbon installs with a plastic connector and it's all very well documented on where you need to place all the items. As you can see from the top view, it has a Z-Sync belt. I found these to be very useful in the older CR10 S5, so it's nice to see that these have been continued to be adopted on these printers. Belt adjustment on the X and Y are simply adjusted at the front and the side, and there's also a handy compartment for a selection of tools that this printer comes with. So last but not least, the extruder bolts onto the side of the mounting bracket and the cables simply plug into the top. It's made easy to maintain and upgrade perhaps in the future. So Creality have impressed me so far with their S1 Pro. It's actually pretty damn good. In fact, they've really changed up their game with this particular printer, and I'm very impressed with the results so far. So let's stick the Sonic Pad on there and see what happens. Here we go. So firstly on the Sonic Pad, I'm going to upgrade it to the latest version, which ends in 32.87. Listed are the changes of additional seven more Creality printers. Firmware for custom printers, which include the alternative chips, including GD32s, which is actually pretty interesting. What they call an improvement on input shaping, changes to the self-test mode on startup, bug fixes, support of main cell, and apparently opening up the SSH interface. Now, once the firmware had been successfully updated, I went into the advanced menu and selected one touch changeover. Inside this menu, it allows you to select one of many Ender or CR style printers. Note that Creality will be adding more printers as time goes on. As you know though, the S1 Pro is my machine and I knew that the chipset on this was ending in 103. You're then prompted to insert a USB that also has an SD card attached. This will create the firmware.bin file that you will need to insert into your printer for it to flash to work with the pad. If the pad and the printer then find each other, you'll then be prompted for a system check. This will include control of fans, bed leveling, Z offset, manual leveling, and 25 point bed leveling. On completion of this, the Sonic Pad will then reset. I wanted to point out also within the menu system, you have many more options for printers with various chipsets. You now have the availability to disable elements in order to allow GD or Giga device chipsets and clones to be installed. Bootloader settings, USB, GPIO pins are also able to be modified inside of this menu. So for the aim of testing, I printed off a PETG Benchy. I then popped the G unit onto the printer and allowed the input shaping on both the X and then the Y to be saved and then rebooted. The first print took around about an hour and 34 minutes, while the second took a mere 55 minutes. You can see the noticeable differences between the two. The changes that Creality have made are simply to measure the X and Y in two separate measurements. Those two measurements are then added to the bottom part of the printer.cfg file. So, of course, here are the prints. The print on the left-hand side is the first one before the input shaping took place. And as you can see, there are some deviations on the print, which are very, very easy to see. A tiny amount of stringing as well. But again, this is PETG, so dialing these settings in are going to be kind of pretty, uh, pretty obvious and pretty apparent. The print on the right, though, it's not perfect. It's not the best benchy that I've ever seen, but you can certainly see that there is a certain difference there. And I believe that's all going to be down to the input shaping. Now, nothing's really changed there. We sped it up a tiny bit. Uh, and there again, there are some sort of lips and bits and pieces in that print. But overall, PETG from Polymaker, um, the right hand boat is so much better than the left. Input shaping, of course, is really just one thing that you can look at to tune on Clipper. Pressure advance and rotation distances are going to be something that I'm going to be looking at next in order to obtain better print quality. So if you want to see those kind of videos, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to find out more content as I make it. Um, I'm still a little bit on the fence with the Sonic Pad. I think there's still some stuff there that 
isn't quite where it needs to be. The SSH access that we spoke about earlier um, is kind of bizarre and it's not the way that I would normally kind of make things, but I can kind of see what they're doing as well. So Creality in that STM32 and GD interface, they're trying to kind of make that on the pad. So they've got kind of more full control over all that stuff, which is kind of fair enough in some respects. Now, when I did try an SSH into it, this is what happened. Well, and as you can see there, I didn't actually get that far, but this all goes back to Creality's main function here with Creality Cloud, with Creality Filament. They're basically making their kind of own ecosystem to try and lock people into that. So what we would anticipate on being traditional Clipper or vanilla Clipper, where it's open source, even though Creality themselves are saying this is open source, it's really not. It's really not that at all now i do like the clipper pad i do really like the s1 pro and i think that's actually a brilliant and pretty phenomenal printer um, and i think certainly when i've got this dialed in with clipper i think it's going to be a hell of a lot better um, and we're going to see some really really good results with that so let me know what you think in the comments let me know what you think of the sonic pad let me know what you also think about what Creality are trying to do with this and if you agree with the lockdowns on this software. Either way, if you have made it this far, thank you very much for watching the video. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Helps the channel out. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.